We're going to look at a couple of problems next where we're going to be asked to find the zeros similar to what we started with today. So I'm going to start out with this uh, fifth degree equation. Okay. And knowing that uh, ultimately I want to find all the zeros for this and also write this in factored form, okay, I'm going to first set out and make my list. Same thing that I've been doing. I'm going to have my 8, which is going to be 1, 2, and 4, and 8. I know that the leading coefficient is 1, so we're not going to get any fractions here. I don't have to divide those by anything because 1 is going to be on the bottom. And then with that said, let's go ahead and set up our synthetic division. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my... Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to make a little list here because I'd like to know what are my uh, possibilities here. So I'm going to write down positive, negative, and imaginary just so I kind of have an idea of what my solutions are going to be like. And remember, if we use Descartes' rule of signs, we can tell how many positive roots this might have. So going from here to here, we have a sign change. No, going from there to there. Yes, that's two. Yes, that's three. Yes, that's four. So in my little diagram I'm going to make, I'm just going to outline how many roots I might have. I know how many I'm going to have. I just want to know what they might be like. Okay, how many are going to be positive, how many are negative, etc. Okay. So I could either have four, two, or zero positives based on that rule of signs. And then if I put a negative x into my function and make a new function, remember all the odd powers are going to change sign. So we're going to have negative x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x plus 8. And this is probably the nicest one because uh, we can see that there's only one sign change. That means that there is one negative root. Okay? No matter how many positive roots, there's one negative root. And then ultimately, now that I know about imaginary roots, then what, what number am I going to put here? If, I, if, if, if it is this right situation, and we have four positive and one negative, then how many, how many would be left to be imaginary? Uh, there'd be none, because there's five total. We know that. If I had two positive ones and one negative one, okay, then how many would be left to be imaginary? Two. And ultimately, if there's no positives and one negative, then how many are imaginary? Four. Now, one thing to notice about the imaginary column is what kind of numbers does this have to be no matter what? Knowing that imaginary roots come in pairs. Okay. Wouldn't they have to be even? Because okay. if I had a 3 in here, wouldn't something be wrong? Okay. Can't possibly have 3 because why? Because we have real coefficients and therefore they have to come in pairs. It's got to be either 0, 2, 4, 6, etc. Okay? All right, so knowing that, knowing that I do have a negative root for sure, okay, there's definitely a negative root. There's not for sure a positive root. I'd probably try to find the negative one first. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and one, uh, negative three, negative five, five, negative six, and eight. And if we do synthetic division there with our negative one, let's try that one first. We'll go negative four here. That'll give us negative one, negative six. That'll give us zero, and that'll give us eight. So that's not the right one because we have an 8 remainder. If we try a negative 2, let's see what we get on that one. We got 1, this would be negative 5, this would be 5, this would be negative 5, those 2 would make 10, and negative 6 would be 4. Those 2 would be negative 8, which would give us our 0. So there's one of them right there. So that's good. It's good, except for when we get done, though, we still have a quartic equation here, so we really have a long way to go yet. We got one of the answers, though. True? Okay. Now, does that help us know which one, which scenario it is yet, though? Okay. We knew there was going to be one negative one. Okay. But that means we don't need to check any of the other negatives. Now we can just try a 1, 2, 4, or 8. Okay. So <clears throat> what I would do, though, if I were you at this point, is since we already have one and we have it broken down into a depressed quartic now instead of a quintic, okay, let's use this to do our synthetic division from here on out. That way, if we find one, then it's broken down even further already for us. We don't have to go redo a bunch of dividing. Okay. So we'll put our 1, negative 5, 5, negative 5, and 4 down. And let's go ahead and try to divide that by 1. So we'll go 1, and that would be negative 4. That would be 1. That would be, whoops, nope, we're doing it by this right here. So remember, we're taking the quartic equation. That was the quotient part. Okay. If we divided it by that, if we divided that again, okay, then we just get another quartic. We ultimately want to keep getting smaller as we go in terms of degree. Okay. And again, we could find out if it was a zero by doing it with this one, okay. but we'd rather find out and have a better equation when we get done at the same time. Save us some time, wouldn't it? Okay. So again, we got uh, these two would be negative four, those two would be negative four, and that would give us a zero remainder. 
So there's another one. So good. Now we know it's not this scenario. It's not 0, 1, and 4. So that means if there's another one, it should be either this one or this one. Okay. Knowing that we only have three more to check, though, okay, this would have to work for all of those at this point. So and, and it might. Let's find out. Let's try two to the next. If we bring our two, to, two over here and we bring our one down, we're going to go two and negative five. That's negative three. Negative six, negative one. Negative two, that would be negative seven. And if I go two and negative seven, that's going to be negative 14. Plus four would be negative 10. So that's not one. If we try our four, we're going to get uh, negative one here. Four, it's going to be one there. Four there is going to give us negative one. Negative four and four is going to give us zero. So we sure enough found another one. All right. Now, one of the things that, uh, that we did here is that when we did that this way, we found that that was a zero. However, did that really help us getting to this point? No, because again, all we did was find a couple of uh, cubic functions, which doesn't do us any good still. So what should we do now? And again, we could have we could have not spent that time doing that part if we had done this in the first place. But if we do that one with our four, okay, and do synthetic division with that one, then when we get done, we'll have a quadratic, won't we? Okay, and we really could have avoided that whole step. So if we go one, <coughs> four there. 0, 0, 4, 0. And so we do, if we divide by 4, we can break it down into a quadratic equation. And that quadratic equation is just x squared plus 1. And now we don't have to divide anymore because we can solve this. If we set that equal to 0, we're going to get x squared equals negative 1. And therefore, we're going to get x squared equals the square root of negative 1, which really is x squared equals plus and minus what? Plus and minus i. All right, and with that said, we've <clears throat> now found all five zeros of that quintic equation, haven't we? Okay. And remember, not only do we want to find the zeros, but we also want to write it in factored form. So remember, negative 2 was a factor, so we'd write x plus 2. We'd write x minus 1. We'd write x minus 4. We'd write x minus i. And we'd write x plus i. Okay. And that would be the factored version of that particular equation. Questions on that one? All right. So, like I said, we've uh, had methods to solve linear equations and quadratic equations for quite some time now. Okay, now we're, like I said earlier in this uh, chapter, is that eventually we're going to learn how to solve these kind of equations that have higher degree than two. Okay, and this is the process that it needs to take. And obviously, it's a higher degree. It's going to require a little bit more work, but it's ultimately the same process. Uh, let's try one more here. I'm going to give you x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 11x squared plus 12x minus 26. And uh, this would uh, this would either be on the calculator part, okay, or we'd be given another piece of information because watch this. If I were to graph that thing. If I were to graph that, and do it with a standard window here. Okay. We would see that we do have uh, two zeros there that are real. Okay. So we conjecture that there's two real and two imaginary at this point because we know there's four together. Now, the problem, though, is that that has a leading coefficient of 1, which means that all my rational zeros should be whole numbers. But notice where it goes through. Does it go through at whole numbers? Nope. Okay. So how in the world would we start dividing then if, it, if we already know that everything on the list is not going to work? If we can't find something to divide into that really twice, we're going to be out of luck, aren't we? So as I mentioned, uh, one thing that we would have to know is that they would have to give us a little more information is what it boils down to. If our rational possibilities don't allow us to break that down at all, then we'd have to be given some other information. And luckily for us, we were. They told us that 3 minus 2i is a 0. So they gave us one of the zeros. And again, how many are we looking for? We're looking for four. So they really gave us two, didn't they? 
they really gave us two because three plus two i has a zero then also too. So <clears throat> therefore, so all right, three minus two i is zero. So three plus two i is a zero also. Okay. So now we got two of them. So from there, then it just becomes a division situation. So let's go ahead and do our synthetic division. We got one, negative six, eleven, twelve, and negative twenty-six. And we're going to go three minus two i with that one. And when we do this, we should get a zero remainder. Let's find out if we do. Okay. So if we bring down our 1 and we multiply, if we multiply 1 times this, it's going to be 3 minus 2i here. True? And if we add those, remember this is this is of the form a plus bi also. It's just got 0i as its i part, if you will. So when we add these two, we'd add the real parts and we get negative 3 minus 2i. And then when we do the multiplication on this one, we're going to use what method? And we're going to have to foil those two. So somewhere on your paper, you'll need to write down 3 minus 2i negative 3 minus 2i, okay. and then start foiling, you get negative 9, negative 6i, positive 6i, which is convenient, and then plus 4i squared. Okay. So in this case, the 6i's will cancel out, and then we also know that this is not an imaginary number anymore, because if we square the negative 1, we're going to get, or square the negative, or the positive i, we're going to get negative 1. So this is really going to be negative uh, 9 minus 4. So the answer would be negative 13. And then when we add those, we're going to get negative 2. And then if we multiply negative 2 times that, we're going to get negative 6 minus 4i. Okay. And then when we add those together, we're going to get 6 minus 4i, negative 12, or positive 12 and negative 6. And then when we multiply these two and add them together, okay, with that, we're hopefully going to get a 0 remainder. So let's find out if we do 3 minus 2i. 6 minus 4i. If we foil again, we're going to get 18 minus 12i. Uh, oops, that's supposed to be a negative, sorry. So negative 18. Uh, and that'd be plus 12i, which again is good. Those would cancel out in the middle. And then we're going to be left with plus 8i squared. Okay. And again, those would cancel. This is really minus 8. And what's negative 18 minus 8? Sure enough, it's negative 20, uh, 26. Uh, I got a sign wrong yeah, somewhere, don't I? Uh, it'd, be, it'd be positive. Yeah, it's right here? Yeah. Thank you. All right, so let's try that again. So negative 6 plus 4i, that's going to make this a positive, and it's going to make this a negative, which ultimately gives us positive, positive, so positive 26. There. So... Eventually, if you multiply it out right, you'll get the correct remainder of zero. And ultimately, that, that still doesn't help us a whole lot because we really, now we have a cubic here okay, that has non-real coefficients. But what's going to happen if I take that and then I do synthetic division with the other root that I know, which is 3 plus 2i? You may want to take a guess. We're going to get a zero remainder, hopefully. Okay, and not only that, we're also going to get a quadratic equation that we can then solve without having to use division. Okay, so if we're doing our one down, this times that is three plus two i, and notice what happens here; those are both opposites, so we'd get a zero in that particular case. Zero times that is zero. Add those, we get negative two, and if we multiply those, we get negative six minus four i, which again is zero, and hence we have our zero remainder. Alright, so those are two of our zeros. The other two are going to come from this quadratic, which is x squared minus 2. If we set that equal to 0, and then we take the square root, we get plus and minus the square root of 2. And if you looked at the graph again, it looks like it goes somewhere between 1 and 2 on both sides, okay. which between 1 and 2, that's 1.41 as the square root of 2. Okay. Alright, and there we do it. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so like I said, in this one, if we were to set out to solve this without being given that first piece of information, we'd be kind of out of luck, wouldn't we? Yeah. Okay. If we, you know, if it's possible, if we looked at the decimal for it, could we make a wild guess that it's radical 2 and then do it from the radical 2 standpoint? Possibly. Okay, a lot more difficult to do it that way, though. Okay. All right, and there's one last uh, piece of direction that I want you to make sure you see. Okay. And that's this idea that every polynomial function with real coefficients can be written as a product of linear factors and irreducible quadratics with real coefficients. Okay? And the directions that you're going to see in this uh, situation are going to be as follows. I'm going to make sure you see the difference between what we just did and what they're asking for. If we have this fifth degree equation, 
We want to write it as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors with real coefficients. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when we did that one earlier, okay, when we did this one, okay, this is these are both linear factors, but they do not have real coefficients. Okay. So we would have stopped if we were asked to factor this. Okay, we would not factor this any further at that point if that was the question because this does not have real factors. Okay, same thing with uh, this one that we did. Ultimately, when you look at that, this one that they did, they found that one of the zeros was uh, negative one third. Okay, and then they took that out, they were left with this quadratic. Okay, you could can continue to divide and ultimately you'd wind up with those three. You get a negative three and a positive three. And then the remainder, the remaining part, that quotient that you'd have gotten here would be x squared plus one. Okay, and you notice that they gave this as the final answer. Okay, and ultimately this is the final answer in this case because this does not have real coefficients if you were to continue factoring it. Okay, we already know that if we factor that again it would be x plus i and x minus i, wouldn't it? Okay. So when they're saying when they say these directions, this is what you want to make sure you do. Okay, only factor far enough so that you don't get any non-real answers. Make sense? So in other words, at this point we're done. Okay, if it said so if it said factor completely, then we would keep going. Okay, but if it says to do the factoring with linear and irreducible quadratics with real coefficients, okay, we don't want to keep going with that one because then we'd have non-real coefficients. Fair enough. So it depends on the directions how far we go. Okay, like I said, if it says completely factor, we'll go all the way and get all five. Okay, but in the case where it says they have to have real coefficients, we would not continue factoring that and we'd be done. Fair enough. So just the key on the directions on that.